Hello everyone, uh, welcome again to my bridge account. Today we are on decision making and the environment of risk and uncertainty. And this is a common topic in performance management, but in some cases, for those who are doing quantitative methods, it is sometimes incorporated. So it should be well conversant with it, right? So uh, let's just start with uh, just a little introduction about this. All right, now. Management actually may make decisions on matters that they are totally unfamiliar. You know, something you may just need, need to start a certain business and certain business, uh, but you have no complete information about it. So uh, that's what we call uh, uncertainty, but it could just be at the level of risk. We'll see what's the difference between risk and uncertainty. On risk, at least you might have done something, you might have some information on which you can determine the probability of something happening or not. But as for uncertainty, you can determine, you cannot determine any sort of probability here. So uncertainty is much worse than the condition environment of risk. So let's take a look. When, as you said, we are just trying to make a decision. To make a decision, you have to decide, let me, let, let me do business one or business two. Or it's the same business, but let me do it to this extent. Maybe let me produce 200 units or 300 units or maybe 250 units. So there will always be, let's take the definition. So there will always be uh, the strategy. The strategy is the decision that you are making. All right, this is number one. Let's see them all first. And then there will always be states of nature. You know, when you say that you are trying to do a, a certain business, it really depends on the market. It really depends on the nature. You may be doing the business maybe under good conditions, economic conditions, under poor economic conditions, or under average economic conditions. So those conditions will always encounter and have an impact on your decision, that is, on your strategy. And then you would have something called payoff. Payoff, this one is nothing than, let's say, you can just ask yourself, oh, if I do business A, if I do business A, uh, and then the environment, and then the economy is good, is in good condition, maybe I'll earn something, maybe I'll earn a hundred million dollars. If I do the same business A, when economic conditions are poor, maybe, oh, I'll have a loss of, let's say, $2 million, something like that. So this is what we call the, the payoff. So it's just a point of intersection between the strategy and the state of nature. We'll see it later, no problem. So as for strategy, it just means the decision, the decision that you make. So you can it's just say to the decision among others that an entity seeks to undertake. As I just told you, you can just, let's say, to do business one, business two, or maybe the same business, but at different levels. So, simply speaking, it is just an action or cause of action, whatever you decide to do. And then strategies are usually under the control of an entity because you decide the strategy, you decide to do which business. So, they are usually under the control of the entity. But also, we have these states of nature. These are just natural phenomena that you encounter when uh, doing your strategy. Let's say this is the case of demand. You may produce 100 units, but the demand may be 80, 100, 120, 130, whatever. So these are the states of nature. That's why we say are uh, the events that strategies encounter when being executed, right? And they are usually beyond the control of the entity, usually beyond the control. Not necessarily, but they are usually beyond the control. So when there is this question, you have to spot which one is a strategy and which one is a state of nature. And it is very easy. So let's go to this payoff. Payoff, as I told you, uh, it could be the earnings, let's say profit, contribution, etc. for a given strategy in a particular state of nature. You ask yourself, if I do business A, and the economy is good, I'll earn a hundred million dollars. If I do business A and the economy is poor, I'll earn only five and five million dollars. So that's what we call the payoff, those values. All right. So we have ways of approaching questions uh for decisions under risk and uncertainty. I'll just show you these ones and then we'll be done for today. So ways of approaching questions. You can use the payoff table. This is one way. You just prepare them in a tabular format. Simply speaking, the tabular format, but also you can use a decision tree. We use these two common methods. So let's take a look at one at a time. 
So as for the payoff table, it's just easy. It's just like you see it here. Now, these ones are the strategies, are the decision. This is decision one, strategy one. This is strategy two, and this is strategy three. So strategy one, maybe these are the states of nature, maybe. You can have state of nature one. For first state of nature, I will have this payoff here. As for strategy one, if you perform strategy one and you encounter the second state of nature, you will have this payoff here. And as for the same strategy one, if you encounter the third state of nature, then you would have this payoff over here. You do the same for strategy two and for strategy three. And now not one thing. We'll see later that if, if you are making a decision under conditions of risk, you would also have the probability of these states of nature happening. You know, let's say the probability of the economy to be good, maybe 60%. And the probability of the economy to be poor, let's say it's 40%. So you have these probabilities. So not necessarily. For example, you'll see that under decisions, for decisions under uncertainty, you wouldn't have these probabilities. So it will really depend on the situation, right? Okay, so this is what the payoff table is like. These are just explanations. It shows both the events and the strategies in the same table. Events, the state of nature. And then it is possible, when is it easy to draw this? Even if you can see it for yourself. Strategy one, strategy two, and strategy three, both encounter the same states of nature, so it's easy. There is no need to put these probabilities here, these states of nature for S1 alone, S2 separate, and S3 separate. We can just put them together. That's why you say it is possible when all strategies encounter the same state of nature, and so just a single table can be drawn. Same states of nature and same probabilities. All right, we'll take a look at a, at a real, real example. So as for now, let's just know the approaches. And then we have a decision tree. Now, in case each strategy had their own states of nature, or the same state of nature but different probability, that becomes much difficult to use the payoff table. And so we use the decision tree as you just see there. That's a decision tree, right? Okay, so we just say that this approach does not condense information into a single table if it is usually impossible or complicated due to the fact that there are diverse strategies with diverse and uncommon states of nature or states of nature with different probabilities. It just becomes, it naturally becomes impossible to draw the table because the, that table actually you could need to separate them for each strategy you would have, you would have uh have the separate table so just do the the decision tree so you just need to know one thing here i'll have to know what represents the strategies and what represent the states of nature so decision nodes that means strategies are usually represented by squares and the choice among decisions is made all right, and then we, there is something called chance nodes. Chance nodes, the states of nature, are usually represented by cycles and they are assigned with probabilities on extending branches, just like this. So just to have the glimpse of what you are just going to encounter. This is a very nice example here. Let's say this is a decision maybe. You are deciding now, do strategy one or strategy two, you decide. On the decision node, actually, it's, it's a matter of decision. You go this way or go this way. And then you come and proceed. If you decide to go this way, you find out that the chance of obtaining something here maybe has 40%, and the chance of obtaining something here maybe has 60%. The same you come this way. Maybe the chance of obtaining this one has 30%, and this one 70%. You would have it, actually. You will be given it in the question, and then you can proceed. In case you need to make another decision here, you will have another square. So this square means a strategy or decision, either go this way or go this way. But if you have probabilities, this is not a decision. You combine them, you find the average. So if for this case, for the states of nature, you find the average, well, as for the decision, you choose the path, this way or this way. Do not worry about this. We'll see it in a very much detail when doing the question. And let's say you have decided to go this way, 
and you find out that you also have options you have to go this way with the probability of 50 percent let's say and this is the probability of 50 percent so this is what i'll just be going this way you'll just be extending the branches until you reach your solution right yeah so that's what follows and then we'll come and take a look at decision making yeah decision makers and the risk appetite we we'll know who are risk seekers who are risk averse guys and and actually we'll know who are the risk neutral guys right so and for now i think you can just end up here or i think i think you can just you can just decide to proceed to but uh i think it's not bad we can just take a look at this one decision makers and risk appetite all right when making decisions and the risk appetite, actually you can have these guys called risk seekers. There are people who will seek risk, risk seekers or risk lovers. You know, there, there is an expected relationship between risk and return. And in that, the higher the risk, the higher the return. So here, if you are told about the risk seeker, these usually seek options with the maximum risk, expecting the highest returns. It's not like you are just going for the maximum risk. No, just seek maximum risk also expecting maximum return because you know there is no one who wouldn't seek maximum return as, as long as risk is low right that's why we say they seek options with maximum risk because they expect high return but for, for example these guys are usually called uh, they are usually called optimists optimists because they are optimistic and as for risk averse guys these are risk avoiders they do not need risk so they expect that if you seek minimum risk, no problem even if the returns are low. But as long as risk is low, no problem even if returns are low, no problem. And then you have these risk neutral guys. First of all, these risk based guys are usually called pessimists. They are ready to give up returns as long as risk is low. Then as for risk neutral, these are just neutral, they say. They are they do not seek to be to seek risk or to be risk averse. So they are ready to lower returns at a reduced risk or to raise re returns at an increased risk. They are just risk neutral, as I just told you. And though uh, after this, we'll just see later how these matters are important. We'll just see the importance of all these three matters here. For example, I will just give you a glimpse of what to expect. As for risk seekers, we usually call them optimists, optimists. And we'll see how we go about that. But as for the risk averse, we usually call them pessimists. They are pessimistic. Pessimists. And last is for risk neutral, actually. They, as you just said, this is just neutral. Now, as for decision under risk and uncertainty, we'll see later that who are optimists. For example, there are several strategies that we usually use. There is something called max max. You can say these are optimists. But I will also see who are pessimists. There is something called mini max maximin sorry i i mean maximin actually just beyond this will come and see something that we call opportunist as for this opportunist uh, you will see them there is something called minimax regret minimax regret and lastly for this risk neutral guy you will find something very enter very very here risk neutral guys these ones are uh, we usually call them we usually use the method called uh expected value something very interesting expected value so just expect all this right yeah this is what to expect and this is what we're just going to deal with so uh, if you want to subscribe you can just do it right now and thank you very much for attending